Are you looking for the fastest, craziest, high performance electric scooters? Well, this is not the right video. Click here if you want to see more on that, because today I'm running through a stellar lineup of commuter electric scooters. Hello, Electroheads, Ailish here, and I've been test riding a lot of electric scooters on private land, of course, because the UK government are fossilized dinosaur losers. What a loser! But with the very positive recent news that rental electric scooter injuries have fallen by 60% since 2019, making the fatality risk of shared electric scooters 20 times lower than mopeds, plus the indisputable benefits of how much cleaner these are for our air and less space hogging these things are on our roads compared to the fatty, overweight cars. You fat Surely it can't be long before legislation passes in the UK for privately owned electric scooters. What do you guys think at home? Is anything gonna change? Let me know down in the comments. All right, let's get into this and make sure to check the legality of electric scooters in your country. Let's go. First up is the RS1 from Riley. It's their entry level electric scooter and provides excellent value for money at 349 pounds. Wow. This is like the VW Golf of e-scooters. It's a solid choice that does the basics well and doesn't look too bad either. It's a lightweight build weighing in at a mere 13 kilograms, but don't let that fool you. Oh no, no, this e-ride, it packs a punch with its 350 watt motor. What does that mean? Decent acceleration. The RS1 has three speed modes, eco, standard, and sport. In eco and standard modes, it can be a little sluggish off the line, but comes alive in sport mode. The 10 inch soft cushioned puncture proof tires do a really good job soaking up cobbles and potholes. I was pleasantly Surprised. It also handles corners brilliantly. The RS1 also comes with not one, not two, but three braking systems. Well, I'll be. There's the singular disc brake, which is excellent. It's responsive and powerful, which equals a short stopping distance. There's also a pedal brake at the back, should you need it, plus an EABS brake, which claims to help regulate speed going downhill, whilst also recharging the battery. Extraordinary. I can really see this being a solid commuter edition with a max 15.5 miles on one charge. It's not the biggest range you'll see today, but for a sub 400 pound electric scooter, plus that sneaky regen downhills, it's not bad. The battery is also removable, which is a huge standout feature for me. It's small enough to fit in your backpack and makes charging far more convenient and safer too. It also means the scooter can be chained up in a public place whilst you're at work and you can take the most valuable part of the electric scooter with you. Like any e-ride, best practice is to lock it up somewhere covered and away from rain to keep it in peak condition. A few things to note though. Firstly, the size of the platform. It's pretty diddy, which is great for portability and storage, but if you have larger feet, then you may struggle. For example, I've got UK size eight feet and it was a touch crowded on there. If you're a heavier rider, this scooter is also a touch slower on acceleration. For reference, I'm five foot 10, weigh around 65 kilograms and it works great for me. But Rich, for example, who weighs more, found it to be a bit slower. But before I move on from Riley, I did actually want to also include the RS3 just as a really quick add-in. It's more expensive, but does have a big selling point to it. This is a super folder. It can condense itself down to teensy tiny dimensions, yet has wider handlebars and a platform compared to the RS1. Some clever engineering means the handlebars fold in and the platform can split the space saving. Granted, it takes a few tries to get the knack, but the results are seriously impressive. In a world where space is premium, an RS3 is a genuinely good solution for those who need an e-ride that can be easily thrown into the back of the car, onto the luggage rack of a commuter train, or stored neatly under a desk or behind a sofa at home, whilst not having to compromise on ride quality. Links for both the RS1 and the RS3 are in the description below. The second e-ride on my list today is from Tektron. We've been really impressed with what they've been producing. The Ultra 5000 in particular springs to mind for heavier riders or those just looking for a bit more well under their feet. It's an e-scooter that combines quality and value in a neat black and orange little package. A total price of £499 at the time of filming this video and you're getting many a bang for your buck. It is heavy at 20 kilograms, heavier than a few e-bikes I've tested. However, it packs a lot of high-end features like power modes, dual suspension, plus chunky tread 10-inch tyres that sets it above many others at its very reasonable price point. I was also shook by the motor's capacity. It delivers more power than 
the Rileys, which is why, with Rich being a heavier rider, this is a top choice for him. Despite his power, I felt totally in control and confident thanks to a higher, wider platform that raises you up for better visibility and offers better stability as there's more room to plant your feet apart. Both brakes work together brilliantly to bring a heavier rider to a halt in quick time. This rear wheel drive scooter has a top speed of 15.5 miles per hour, which can be increased to 25 miles per hour using the app. It's got a 25 mile range and takes six hours to charge up fully. And let's give a shout out to that very handy carry handle integrated at the back there, which makes carrying a 20 kg scoot not as bad as you'd expect. Just don't try and tackle too many stairs with it. In short, for 500 pounds, I think you'll struggle to match this. In fact, it's been so popular, it can usually be out of stock. So if you see it on our website and it is available, make sure to snap it up. Otherwise, you can sign up for our mailing list using the link below and we'll let you know when it's back in. But before you do that, make sure to also hit the like button and let me know if any of this video has been useful to you. The third electric scooter on my list is hitting the dizzying heights of the 1K marker. It's a bit of a jump in price wise from the others, but you need to hear me out. Buzz has really nailed this one. For starters, it has an IP65 rating, which means it's very suitable for crappy British weather. It's also got excellent front and rear suspension of the likes I haven't seen on any other e-scooter I've ridden. The spring shock absorption gives you the feeling of being on a magic carpet ride with awesome stability thanks to the 10 inch wheels but get this the tires they're self-healing come again yeah you heard me right buzz claim the self-healing lining can instantly seal 90 percent of punctures this is some next level shit right here it's fucking crazy though stop swearing will you the beefy 450 watt motor makes for incredible acceleration and sustained power meaning it's good for both light and heavy riders alike the brakes are sharp they provide a good stopping distance and like the riley's also features formula one on car tech, regenerative braking. This recycles your power back into your battery as you slow down to help keep your range topped up whilst you're on the go. Plus, it goes up to 21 miles per hour and has a bloody 51 mile range. This is a huge range claim. The battery is beefier than standard, contributing to the F450's beefy weight of 24 kg. But what I also find really impressive is how conscientious the team has been with ensuring safety. E-rides in the past have unfortunately made the headlines for setting on fire and that's usually down to either improper treatment and or it being a ropey battery in the first place. We've actually done a video on that so make sure to check it out here. But Buzz has implemented a smart battery protective system that regulates the battery and is designed to protect you from over discharge, short circuits and overcharge. This is a big big tick. It feels like they've really thought about everything. There's even indicators on the end of the handlebars. Albeit it's not the brightest or most obvious in the day, but conscientious steps made into the core design of electric scooters can help change the current perception of these being incomprehensible on our road. Make sure to check out the link in the description below to find out more. Moving on to e-scoot number four, which has been a firm favorite here at Electroheads HQ for the past few years and absolutely deserves a place on this list. Decent have been pushing out serious contenders that have been leaving competition like Bird, Pure and the famed Xiaomi 365 in the dust. And that's all because of a few simple features that really sets it apart from all the rest. Firstly, the speed. Although Decent claims the scooter can hit 15.5 miles per hour, in our own test, we found it can actually go up to 19 miles per hour and even 17 miles per hour on the max rider weight of 100 kilograms, which is decent. Oh yes. I'm going to be using that through this section. Secondly, ride comfort. Electric scooters like the Xiaomi M365, for example, use airless tires to avoid punctures and lower maintenance. But what that means is a pretty rocky, uncomfortable ride if you're going over anything that isn't smooth tarmac. And let's be real, the holes and cracks in the road are rife. However, Decent have opted in for a 10 inch squishy pneumatic tire, which acts as a cheap and simple swapping for suspension. This also keeps the total weight down to a mere 13 kilograms, one of the lightest on this list today. And finally, the pièce de résistance of this whole masterpiece, a removable battery that is beautifully hidden inside the stem. For comparison, the Decent doesn't have regen braking like the Riley's or Buzz E F450, and the ranges are very modest, 12 miles. But for the price and all those handy features, you can't really argue with it. Spend some more time with the Decent one by watching Jack's review right here, or click the link below to be taken straight to the product page. Last and most certainly not least, is one of the cheapest and officially my favorite electric scooters on this list today. 
just because of how joyous it is to ride. The Windgu B9 is a compact, fun machine, whilst arguably being the most convenient of all the rides that I've mentioned today because of the nifty basket on the back there. Pretty cool. It's not cool. Convenient and stability are really at the heart of this e-ride thanks to the incredibly pushy padded seat and wide deck that allows you to plant your feet keep you steady. And the greatest part, it's so affordable, precisely £419 while filming this video. But what are your thoughts on this kind of e-ride? It's a little more novel, I'll give you that, let me know. My 5 foot 10 stature does belittle this little zesty lime coated scoop, but it's got a 350 watt motor that gets you off the line, albeit slowly, but it climbs up to a worthy speed. Specifics can't be said because it actually doesn't have a speedometer, but this isn't an option for those looking to nab something fast and furious. This this is a brilliant poodle along that I can really see being used to nip around the shops, pick up some bits. The range reflects this with the smaller 12.5 miles max coverage off of one charge. But I want to see legislation here in the UK that is getting these being used to mobilise communities, not two tonne tailpipe emission emitting air polluting cars. Cars. Check out the link in the description below to head over to the Electrohead store and to find out more. And that's it. It's very clear to see from this lineup today that e-scooters are more than road ready. They're a cheaper, healthier, happier alternative to a car that every single occupancy driver should be considering. If not for the huge savings in fuel costs, but for the impact it can have on helping save the world from becoming a fiery hellscape. So for those of you that live in forward thinking countries that have the laws in place to allow privately owned electric scooters on public roads, what? are you waiting for? Don't forget to subscribe for more e-mobility news and reviews and I'll catch you for the next one.